think it's um, – I think if you go back to the New Orleans game at the end of uh, January, we're 7-2 and two going into the break. And uh, so it's – you know, I, I, we, we always talk about it, and doing it is always a different thing, but um, guys in and out of the lineup, trading for guys, signing guys, and you know, for us to continue to find ways to win and have different guys step up every night, uh, I think it speaks to uh, our chemistry, our depth, um, and uh, you know, we've got a really good team in there. But my message to them is simple. Coming out of the break, 23 games to go. Enjoy some time away. Make sure you do something. Be safe. And uh, the 23 games after the break are not going to be easy, uh, starting with a two-game road trip in Cleveland and Memphis. But uh, it's been a hell of a season to this point. The, the biggest challenge is not being satisfied, you know, staying hungry and staying motivated. How would you compare where you guys are now compared to this time last year? I know it's radically different. Oh, I can't even remember this time last year, Jack. <laughs> I mean, you know, last year I don't think we were in first place by five games or whatever it is. Um, I think if you look at our record against teams in the top six in the West, we have the best record against the, the top six teams. Obviously, we're one, so there's five other teams in that group. So now we're nine and three, I think, against those teams, which shows that you're beating some of the best teams in the league. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, a point of emphasis in San Diego was protecting our home court. You know, point of emphasis in San Diego is becoming a better running team. And those are two things that we have the best home record in the NBA. 27-4, and four, I believe, uh, which is tremendous. And we're a top four running team. We had 19 fast break points tonight. Um, and I just like, I, I just love how we play. Like, I love, I'm, I'm a coach, but I'm also a fan of the game. And, you know, 34 assists, the ball pops, everybody plays for each other. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a great group to be a part of. Coach, two questions. One, what can you say about Jeff Green's night? And two, are you going to lose your voice in Salt Lake City? I'm trying to find it before I get there because I'm going to be yelling a lot at those guys, trying to get a dub. Um, you know, I, 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 think, I think Jeff, like, uh, I was joking with him. I don't know if he like Ponce de Leon for you history people out there. I don't know if he found the Fountain of Youth down in Florida or not, but he's – I thought he was great against Miami. I thought he was great tonight. Uh, usually – when I get Flacco back in the game in the fourth quarter, it's usually for Jeff. And I thought Jeff was just doing a great job, so I get Flacco in for CB, um, who also is just playing at a high level for a rookie on a really good basketball team. But, uh, yeah, Jeff tonight, um, he wasn't shy. He got him up, I guess. You know what I mean? He got him up. But uh, 24 points and uh, had a lot of you know, playing off of Nicola, cutting, chase down block. We gave out two chains tonight. Um, it's getting like Little League soccer. Everybody gets a chain after a win. But um, Jeff got one. I thought he had a great chase down block. Michael was also a defensive player of the game. I thought Michael's defense was um, really good tonight. And um, so, yeah, Jeff is, you know, playing at a high level. So, you know, we'll have some hard decisions coming you know, down the stretch. But knowing that you have a veteran like Jeff who's been there and done that is uh, very comforting as a coach. Where's, go ahead, go ahead. Where's Thomas at in his kind of integration process and just, I guess, how would you review his first couple games in the rotation? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, what do you have, eight and five tonight? Uh, he had 10 and two, I think, in Miami. And that's only going to get better, Vinny. I, I think the more he's with us, and especially what's well, going to be great, hopefully, is coming out of the break, we get Aaron and Jamal back so we can get our starting lineup back and then get our second unit down and create that on-court chemistry, which Thomas will be a big part of, Reggie will be a big part of. And that's going to take a little bit of time, obviously, but um, you know, I think Thomas shows he has ability to screen, roll, finish around the basket. He had a hustle play tonight where he just worked for second and third opportunities, finished it, got the end one. Um, I love his energy. You know, from just coaching against him, I love Thomas Bryant's energy and his passion and his emotion out there. And um, I, I think he's going to be great for us. I really do. Coach, can, you, can you speak to Michael Porter's mentality, just how it has shifted from when he first came into the league to where he is right now? Wow. Uh, just uh, you have to give Michael so much credit. His game has changed so much. Um, you know, I think when he first was healthy for us after missing the first year, uh, he, he displayed a, a, a great jump shot, very efficient. 
Um, he showed the ability to rebound. Those are things that jumped out when you looked at Michael Porter early on. How many times did he put the ball on the floor tonight and get to the basket? Like he's in attack mode. I mean, that, that, that's like a whole other dimension. So now you're not just a three-point shooter. When you are a great shooter, they're going to run you off. They're going to close out to you. So can you also put the ball on the floor and he's getting to the basket and finishing? Um, you add that to the defense and the want to and the passion and the improvements on that end. Um, and that's what you want. You know, you, you, we, we took a chance on draft night. Michael Porter dropped because of, there were concerns about his medical history, his back. Well, we were saying, well, this is, this is going to be great for us. And I think Michael deserves so much credit, Ryan, because he's just, he's bought into it. He hasn't fought it. He hasn't resisted. You know I mean? He's, he's a young player who's constantly getting better and improving. And that's what you want from all your players, whether it's the MVP, Michael Porter, or whoever. You know, you, you want guys that are hungry and motivated to improve. One more. Michael, could you have given uh, KCP uh, the DPOG award as well? I know a lot of guys got it. But just his impact, I think he had three steals, three threes. He just seems to be playing his, his, his role to a T. I mean, the reality is, honestly, we, like, KCP could get it every night. <laughs> no, really, I mean, like, it's... We should actually name it the KCP DPOG <laughs> and just give it to everybody else. Yeah. I mean, but we understand the kind of player that KCP is. I mean, there's a reason we went out and got him. You know, we felt like he was a missing piece, a guy that could stretch the floor, make threes at a high clip, and guard the other team's best player. I mean, and he had a steal tonight and just some of the plays that he makes. You can, you can see why when he was in high school, he was a highly uh, sought-after football player. The guy just has a tremendous feel for the game, athleticism, anticipation. Um, so uh, I just wish KCP was coming to Salt Lake City. I wish Aaron Gordon was coming to Salt Lake City. I wish Jamal Murray was coming to Salt Lake City. And I wish I wasn't going to Salt Lake City. <laughs>